Hey everybody, I'm just starting up all the cameras. Hopefully the Wi-Fi behaves itself <laughs> so we can get this done. I don't know. We've been having problems the last few days. We'll see. All right, now let's bring myself up on all of the iPads. I hope you guys are having a great day. Um, let's see. Oh, there we are. There I am. Hey, 15 people already on Periscope. Yay! I don't see. Hi, Canada Robin. Hi, you're already up on Ustream. I don't see a picture though. How come I don't see a picture of myself? I see you guys on the video camera screen. Hello, Lisa. Let's try this again. Having Ustream issues. My camera shows it's connected. Oh, there we are. Yay, but I couldn't see anything, which isn't going to help me. Yay, I can see everybody. Woohoo. <laughs> All right. So the first thing we will do while we're just waiting for everybody to log on because we are... Yay, you see video, Canada Robin. Thank you so much. At first I panicked a little bit because I didn't see anything. All right. Wait a couple minutes. We're a couple minutes early. Um, I went to my website this morning. This is the address here. So, hey, Annalisa, hey. Um, hey, Teresa, over at Periscope. I'm going to be, like, talking to both streams. So sometimes you'll ask me questions that you don't see asked in one stream or the other, but I'm answering the question. It's because it's from the other one. We're, we're simulcasting again in both Periscope and Ustream at the same time. I did actually take some pictures this morning of my setup. I'll post them to um, social media later <laughs> so you can guys see my homemade setup. Um, from now on, there is a Watercolor Wednesday page on my website here. And any documents or website download kind of things, reference material, that I um, talk about, you'll be able to find the links over here. I can do that. I can read the questions out loud before I answering them. That's a good idea. And I have more coffee, so I'm gonna hopefully do better today. Anyway, there's a Watercolor Wednesday page on GinaBAarons.com. So any websites, downloads, anything I talk about, the I'm gonna try to put the links over there. I'm gonna try to put the ones I know about that I want to talk about before the broadcast over here. If some come up during the broadcast, I'll try to remember to stick them over there. If I forget, you guys message me somewhere. Um, one of the ones that I added was Brent Fraser Photography, which is some of the reference photos we've been using from those calendars my husband brought home from work. Uh, I also added a couple of links that refer to paint tests, which we're going to do this morning. Uh, the two brands we're going to work with this morning are Schmink and Daniel Smith. Hang on, coffee break. And every week, um, we are going to, um, or every other week, it depends, you know, it depends. Maybe every other week, um, and in between we'll just do a painting. Um, but when we do these paint test sessions, uh, whatever brands I've decided that we're going to work with, I will find reference material for you guys and I'll post the links here. So make note of this. Uh, go to the Watercolor Wednesday page. This is where my blog page is at. This is where my shopping site is at. Um, it has links to all the places on the internet. You can support me, Etsy, Redbubble, you know. All the links for all of that stuff are here. Okay. And you know, it's a do-it-yourself website, so, and I don't really, I know enough about what I'm doing to be really dangerous, so there's always improvements. That, my grammar sucks, so there's always typos. But you see something spelled wrong or, you know, <laughs> it won't surprise me and it also won't hurt my feelings if you, you know, send me a message and let me know, hey, you know, I noticed this word over here is spelled wrong. <laughs> I don't know. 
Yeah, you know, on Periscope, I'm sideways on my view, too. And the, on the camera, it's fine. So I, I should say on the smartphone, I don't know. <laughs> it's a Periscope thing. On the smartphone, the broadcast is fine. On Ustream, if you prefer to go to Ustream, it's fine. All right, so we're going to talk about light fastness today. I'm sorry that we're sideways on Periscope. And it seems like, even for me, because I'm watching my own broadcast on my iPad, um, moving my iPad around doesn't seem to do anything to the view. And I know it's okay in the smartphone, because I checked it before as we were getting on. So i got to think it's a Periscope issue. And it could have something to do with all the updates that have happened recently. Not sure. We're going to talk a lot today. And no, I, the phone is fine. <laughs> the phone is not sideways. I can try it, but... Yes, the phone is landscape. I just double-checked it again. <laughs> so, I don't know. We're going to talk a lot today uh, about deviant art. In my iPad, it's also so they're talking on over on UStream. I mean, on Periscope about the view being sideways, and I think it's a Periscope issue. My f broadcasting device is landscape, but the view for the viewers is um, sideways, so I'm not sure. And I'll fix the Deviant Art link after the um, broadcast. I'll take a look at it. I think I checked all of them except that one. And that one was sent to me by a YouTube viewer. All right, so we're going to talk a lot about light fastness today. So like many of you, I'm sure, I have this little um, drawing and note that my daughter wrote for me when she was about three. She said that, um, I mean, she wrote, drew it with like Crayola markers. What's okay, D. Crumb? What's, what's okay? Hi. She wrote it with Crayola markers and... Um, when we talk about light fastness, this is what we're referring to. So when she drew this, it was light, bright colors. I think it was like blues and, you know, bright oranges, maybe pink. And over the years, it's turned, you know, green. Um, all the colors have turned green. I do, I do remember it being all different colors. Um, that has to do with light fastness and the pigments in the marker fading over time. Um, all of your art materials, whether they're kids' art supplies or adult art supplies, have a certain amount of light fastness, or they don't. And um, I can watch sideways. Cool. Um, so th when we talk about light fastness, we're rever referring to the pigments staying true to their original color over a long period of time, or not. Um, in this case, of course, this is Crayola markers or comparable. I don't remember what the brand was now, but it was just a kid marker. And over time it's turned green. The only one that's kind of stayed is the bright, you know, orange. I think that was orange. It might have been pink, uh, but that one's kind of stayed. Um, the rest of them have all turned green. And I pull, I have this on my bulletin board. I pulled it off my bulletin board. So we're going to, we're going to refer to that this morning. I tried to tilting my device. I'm still sideways on Periscope. <laughs> All right, so before we get started with too much chatting, let's open up our paints. This, of course, is my Daniel Smith palette, which you've all seen if you've watched me before. It is my preferred brand uh, because it's made in the USA. It's easy for me to get. And I love their huge, ginormous range of colors. They have over 200 colors. Some of them are made with semi-precious stones. A lot of them granulate, meaning that when they dry, they leave this granular texture in the paint. And one of the things I love about watercolor is the watery, granular texture that you get with watercolor that you just really can't duplicate with anything else. And I love that about it. Now, they only come in tubes. They don't come in cakes. 
So you can't, um, you can't necessarily compare them with lots of other brands that only come in cakes. You can. They don't come. They don't make cakes. They only make tubes. Now, I have not had a. Um, yay! Okay, good. They're fixing things over with the view over on Periscope. <laughs> um, Keep throwing those hints out there on Periscope for adjusting the view for other people who are watching. For me, it doesn't matter because I'm only looking at the comments, but maybe it'll help some other people out that are watching. So whatever you all have done that have helped uh, switch the view to landscape um, for you know yourselves, throw some hints out there so other people can give it a shot. Um, okay, so I some people I know have said that with Daniel Smith paints, you, they squeeze them out of the tube into the pans and let them dry. They have trouble reconstituting them. I've never had that problem. It's not an issue for me. Um, I am in the habit with all of my watercolors of taking my spray bottle. Before I get started, I spray the whole palette. Even if I only think I'm going to use one color, I have a habit of spraying the whole palette fairly well. Leave it that way. Set it aside. I'm going to move this little note somewhere safe because I don't want to get water on it. Yeah, I've never had that problem with Daniel Smith's either. I've, ha I've seen other artists talk about it, but I've never had that problem. Now this is my Schmink palette, and do I think that's how you pronounce it? No. It's a German word. Some people say Schminky. I don't think that's necessarily right either. I'm not German, and I'm not even German-American. My last name is Aarons, but my husband is German-American. Um, and he always says he only knows how to get yelled at in German. Schminka. Schminka. Oh, thank you. Schminka. So I only know how to say Sprechen Sie English, and they say nine, and then that's the end of the conversation. So um, so anyway, Schminka. So now we know. Schminka. And um, this is the that palette. Now, I haven't used it very much. I have used it a little bit. Um, for no particular reason. I, don't, I like them. Uh, they're very well pigmented. They have a lot of colors and they come both in tubes and pan form. The tube colors match in pigment um, uh, strength, match the, ha the pans. So if you use one particular color, say the cobalt turquoise, and you use it up, you can go get a tube of their cobalt turquoise and the pigment's going to match. Um, you can't say something about that, uh, like that about Daniel Smith because they don't make pans. They only make tubes. Um, I like pan paints and I started with pan paints. One of my gripes about them though is that, um, and, and I know why they do it because it's a good value. They fill them all the way to the top. Um, and I guess I've gotten used to creating my own pans and not quite filling them up all the way so that when I spray them like that with water, the water doesn't just pool everywhere and it sinks inside, and it's a personal, weird idiosyncrasy of mine. It's not, you know, there's not that there is anything wrong with these. All right, so you can get lots of information about watercolor brands, their light fastness, their opacity or transparency, their granulation, their staining ability, whether, you know, that means whether they're gonna soak into the paper or not from the manufacturers. A lot of them have it, not all of them. We found out that we don't think Prima, who just came out with watercolors, actually has any light fastness information on their paint. Um, one of my uh, peeps over in my Facebook group is in communication with them, uh, as am I, and so we are working with them to try to see if we can find that out, but we don't know yet. Um, Daniel Smith has a color chart that you can get that's a printed color chart. And under each one of their print, um, they do make sticks, and I don't have them yet. I do want to get them to try. I need my reading glasses. Hold on. <laughs> All right. I can't read this little print without these. All right. So this is the Daniel Smith printed chart. And under each brand of paint, it tells you all the information that you want to know. It has the light fastness rating. Uh, one, which is excellent, to four, which is fugitive or not rated. And the tri, yes, you're right. So, and the tri dots, they have a dot color chart that you can buy for about 20-ish dollars, 22, something like that. 
Um, and on their color chart, dot chart, it has an actual sample of the paint and it has the same information on it under each color that this printed one has. So whichever one you have will have this information as well as most of these brands have this information on the tubes. So all of the brands have some colors that are extremely light fast and some colors that are all the way at the other end of the spe spectrum where they're not even rated. So no matter the brand, whether it's an expensive fine art brand or it's um, you know a lesser one, if they've rated their paints, they all have ones that are rated as light fast and ones that aren't. So if you're really concerned with your artwork standing the test of time and you wanna only use light fast paints, you wanna look at that when you're buying them. Uh, I don't generally look at that. I honestly, to be honest with you, until you guys all started asking me this question, I never even looked. I, if I create a piece of artwork that I really love, I scan it. Uh, it's 21st century. That's the best way, in my opinion, for me to archive my artwork is to scan it and create a digital file. Now, it's not a traditionalist way to go, of course. Do And I'm not an expert. I don't know everything. I, you know... <laughs> By any stretch, could I get some of this information wrong? Yeah, <laughs> would be. Uh, hello, I'm the one who's put my telephone in the refrigerator, so sure. All right. So on the Daniel Smith chart and most of these charts, they have light fastness, they have transparency ratings, whether the color is transparent or opaque. All of these colors that you see, if you look at this chart, if you can see it, like this one is chromium green oxide and it has a dark black circle underneath the color. That's because that one is um, opaque. It's not transparent. I know, right? So, you know. Um, if So if you really want to, you're concerned about light fastness and you love transparency, then you want to pay attention to all of these ratings and markings when you're buying your paint. Um, it also tells you on these which ones granulate or not. Um, and granulation means that when the paint dries, it leaves a granular texture in the paint on the surface. And I love that sort of grainy granular texture. One of the things I love about watercolor, I'll answer the scanner question in a minute. One of the things I love about watercolor is the grainy texture that some of the colors give you and the pooling and puddling and the texture you get from that. Those are some of the things I love about watercolor and that have always fascinated me. Um, somebody asked me over on Periscope uh, about what kind of scanner I use. I do have a Halo scanner mouse and I use that occasionally. I also have an HP um, all-in-one scanner printer and uh, I an HP Envy and I use that most of the time. Uh, my projects are littler so I use that. Both of these documents I have um, actual pamphlets but I did find downloadable versions of these two brands and their color charts with their markings for granulation now the schmink one because it's a germ schminka I gotta start saying that correctly because it's a German watercolor uh, and I think it's in the printed uh, online version as well as this one the descriptions for each thing are in English and German so it takes a little longer for me to get through, but you can get information about all of these paints from their websites. I do have a couple others that I've picked up over, you know, shopping and things. Quar has one, and again, they have the same kind of information. They each company has a different way of rating their colors, though. So while one Daniel Smith, if it has a one, is is very light fast, and have if it's a five, not or a four, not so much. Another one one may not be light fast at all and and four may be very light fast so they each have a different kind of rating system so it's a good idea to print these or pick them up and find out before you go shopping get some kind of a key all right if you watched my YouTube video I posted last night I put this little binder together for us to do these tests in this is a I forget what kind of, I said last night and I've already forgotten what kind of binder it is, but I picked it up at Tuesday morning. It was inexpensive. It was like three bucks. I already had it in my stash of stuff. I didn't get it special for this. 
Um, I made a couple of sections, comparisons and samples, and I created um, a chart on here. I'm going to pull the chart out. We're going to work with that first. And this is 140 pound Strathmore watercolor paper. I've made six columns, well seven, but six columns for colors, one to write notes in for the brand. There's a row across the top, top to write the basic color name in, and then in each square, depending on the brand of paint, I'm going to write the actual color that I use. And then if you want, um, if you need to make notes about your tests, you can write that over here. Now I made enough spaces to do four tests on here, so today we're going to do two of them. And we'll start with the Schmincke. And um, I think, in my opinion, I think good colors to try and do this on would be yellow. This is a Sharpie marker pen. Orange. The colors you want to try may be different for you. Red. Green. And the brands that you do this with are going to depend on what you have in your stash. Or what you, maybe you have a friend that has um, a few different brands of watercolor paint. Even if it's only one brand, but her brand is different than yours. Get together and you guys do this test with your two different brands of paint. Okay, blue. And then on this last color, I really debated a lot because if I left it, you left it up to me, I would do probably do Payne's Gray. Y'all know that if you've been watching me at all. But I really think that the one that I'm curious the most about would be violet or purple. So we're going to do purple, some shade of purple. Okay. So we're going to start with the Schmincke. Oh, you're welcome. This is going to be on YouTube later, so no worries there. So you can catch up later. <sighs> okay, so over here, we're going to, first thing that we're going to do is we're going to write the brand. Now, if you want to make notes about the brand, or if it's, say, May Mary, but it's the May Mary has a couple different kinds. They have their student grade and then the May Mary Blue, which the art, is the artist grade. So you want to put some notes in there. Schminka is just Schminka. As far as I know, I could be wrong. I'm frequently wrong. <laughs> okay, now I'm going to do Cadmium Yellow. Oops, helps if I spell yellow right. Um, I'm going to do, and I was looking at this last night to see what colors I had that were similar on the two, on the two color, uh, the two uh, palettes. So you want to kind of keep, um, you know, you want to do, you want to, if you have permanent red in both brands, then you would want to do permanent red. I don't have the same exact color across the board in these. Let's see. I have Pyrrole Orange in Daniel Smith. I have Transparent Orange in Schmincke, which actually is a real one of my favorite orange colors. Let's do that. And then we're going to do a red. And so let's do... Um, let's do scarlet red. And then a green. So let's do... Cobalt Green Dark. Let's do a blue. Now, I the standard blue I have in almost all my palettes, it's a good primary blue, ultramarine blue.
and then violet. So I only have one true purple or violet color in the Schmincke palette, which is manganese violet. So All right, and then for Daniel Smith, we're gonna do Hansa Yellow Medium. Now, sure, I could get closer because I have the dot chart, but that's not the point. I don't want to do that because I want to show you guys how you can do this with what you have. Your colors may not be an exact match, but you should be able to get an idea of pigmenting and granulation um, comparing similar colors or close colors. So pyrrole orange. Orange. Of course, if you want to do this with different brands, go to the store and buy tubes in the exact same color. Buy Ultramarine Blue, buy Hooker's Green, buy Cadmium Yellow, buy Alizarin Crimson in both brands. Um, for our red, we're going to do... What red did I say it was doing? Scarlet Red? So we're going to do Permanent Red. And green, we're going to do Cascade Green. Blue, Ultramarine Blue. And for our purple, I'm going to do Quidocridone Purple because that's what I have. I do too. I love, somebody just said they love Cascade Green. I love Cascade Green. Um, Quidocridone Purple is a little bit more blue than Manganese Violet, but we're going to, that's what I have, so that's what we're going to use. Okay, so now it's time to swatch. So I'm going to use just a kind of a medium to small round brush. I'm going to use this Van Gogh brush. This is a Van Gogh number six round. And let's see. So cadmium yellow. So I'm gonna grab a little bit of the paint. Make sure you guys can see me. And I'm gonna put it here on on the left side of my square. These are about one inch squares. I'm going to rinse my brush off. That's going to be the full strength of the pigment, but then I'm going to take my brush with just water on it. It's just damp and I'm going to pull some of it out. And then we're going to let it dry. Look how bright that color is. And then the transparent orange. I do a lot of counting, so if I, if you catch me counting on camera if I do it out loud, it's because that's how I find my colors on the palette. All right. And that's a transparent orange, and one of the things I love about it is how it, you know, you can get this bright, dark, vibrant color, or you can really pull it out and get this really pretty transparent color. Uh, scarlet Red. Cobalt Green Dark, which is this one. Make sure I'm pulling the right ones. If you guys have any questions as we're going, ask. I almost never recommend one paint over the other. I will tell you which one is my preferred favorite, but I don't. I have lots of brands of paint and I love them all. Sorry, I had to count. Um, which one is best for you will depend on what you want to do with it and what your budget is.
There's lots of really great brands of paint out there. And then manganese violet. So I like the idea of doing this in a binder because then you can make your sort of own reference book. And the really great fun way to do this rather than, um, I'll answer that in a minute over on Periscope, rather than buying a bunch of brands of paint is to get together with your friends who also love watercolor and have different brands than you do. And you all get together and you all do some of these charts. And then you can make, when you go to buy more paint, a, a more educated decision about what's gonna work for you, what colors that you like, and um, what's in your budget. So that's the great way to do this. You don't need to be like me where you have like a million brands of watercolor paint. So we are testing different paints. Um, we're swatching six basic colors, and then we're gonna do uh, two little paintings with the two different brands of paints. Uh, all, each painting will be all in one. Um, I'll answer that in a minute. <laughs> <laughs> and we're creating a little watercolor reference book. Okay, so we just we just swatched the Schminka. Um, and so we're doing yellow, orange, red, green, blue, purple. Now we will do the Daniel Smith. There is not enough room on this table with all these devices over here. I'm just gonna just gonna put that out there. Alright, so now we'll do um so most of the time, you really need to mix flesh tone to get a good one. You can get close with some of the brands um, to something that's already, a, you know, kind of a fresh tone, flesh tone you can work with. Like with the Schminka, there's Naples Yellow Red, which is kind of a flesh tony color. Uh, somebody, I'm sorry, somebody on Periscope asked about is there a good flesh tone. So all the brands have like a Naples Yellow Red-ish type of color. And for the most part, if you don't want to mix flesh tone, that's probably going to be the color that you want to go with because it's a very flesh tony color. You're welcome. So this is the Schminka Na Naples Yellow Red, and then this is the Daniel Smith Naples Yellow, which is more yellow, but you could just add a little bit of, um, you know, a tiny little bit of red or pink to it. Uh, to get a flesh tone. Most of the time you have to mix something. Probably the closest one I've ever seen is the Schminka, Naples Yellow Red. All right, so now we're gonna do Daniel Smith and first we have the Hansa Yellow Medium. Now this is a slightly different yellow color than the Cadmium, but this is what I have and in my opinion, they're both very well pigmented. Now, Pyrol Orange, which is a nice orange, but it's not necessarily, it's not as uh, transparent as the transparent orange, but it's, um, I love this color. And it's more of a red orange. This is more of a burnt orange. But they're both very well pigmented. Okay, Scarlet Red, and I said we were going to do Permanent Red. They're both very well pigmented brands of paint, in my opinion. Cascade Green. Oh, that's not Cascade Green. See, I stuck my brush in the wrong one. Oops. <laughs> I'm not talking while I'm doing this. Holy moly. Okay, Cascade Green. That was Sap Green, <laughs> which is a completely different color. <laughs> Cascade Green is closer to the Cobalt Green Dark in the palette that I have. Yes, please tap the screen if you love the broadcast over on Periscope. Also, um, don't fe be afraid on both Periscope and Ustream to share the broadcast if you like what you're seeing. Um, if you have questions or anything for me later, you can leave a comment on the YouTube video when it goes up or you can join my Facebook group, A Life of Art and Self-Expression. This is the Daniel Smith Ultramarine Blue. And you can see that it's actually more, it's brighter, more pigmented, I think, than the um, 
Schminka, but not by a lot. And then Quidocridone Purple. So there you have a side-by-side -side comparison of similar colors in the two brands of paint. Is there a difference? A little bit. Not a lot, I don't think. Um, I'm going to put a little bit more of the permanent red here. Yeah, that's good. So this gives me a, a good um, idea of the different brands of paint now. If I was, my favorite palette is a mixed palette. So if I was going to mix a palette, and I've done, I do have one that's a mixed palette, I would pull the transparent orange from the Schmincke and the manganese violet and then the ultramarine blue from the Daniel Smith, the quadrochrome purple, the cascade green, and I would mix up the colors. What you're going to find when you get into watercolor is there is not one brand generally that you love. Um, that you like the finer qualities of watercolor, the artist grade watercolor, and that they stain and they last and they're light fast, but that the different artist grade brands have colors that you love. Daniel Smith makes colors like Moon Glow that nobody else makes, and, and they have Tiger's Eye Genuine that nobody else makes, but both Schmincke and Golden's Quar have a fabulous cobalt turquoise that I just love. And Cerule I love Schmincke's Cerulean Blue. And I just saw there was a post over on Periscope. Somebody said that they need a palette that's just blues and purples, that they're weird. I don't think that's weird. <laughs> I love blues and purples. All right, so that's our color comparison. I am going to let this dry, and after the broadcast, I will be scanning this as it is right now and putting a copy of this up on my Facebook, my, uh, Facebook group and my website for you all. And as we fill it out, we will keep scanning it and adding to it and, and updating the document so that you guys have a color comparison. I do recommend that if you're interested in getting some uh, to any watercolors that you do a little bit of research and depending on your budget I built up my collection by buying one tube at a time or two tubes at a time all right so now we're going to get out our next section which again has spaces for four brands of watercolor I'm not going to go too far with this because I want to use the same colors we used to create our, our little comparison chart. Um, I'm going to write in the corner the brand of paint that I'm using after I put my glasses on so I can see what I'm doing. Okay, so make sure you put the brand on here somewhere and that you make yourself some notes if you need to. Do it in a waterproof pen so that when you do your painting it doesn't run. And I recommend doing, as per one of the charts that I found over on my website, um, that might be the Deviant Art link that somebody said they had a problem with. Um, they did, I think, 12 different color compare uh, comparison paintings with different brands doing the same picture so I recommend I love that idea so I recommend that you do the same thing and we're just going to do something simple do a little a little house It's not about doing a perfect drawing by any stretch, it's just about drawing something that's the same and that's something maybe that's easy that you can draw that'll give you an idea. You know, something something simple like that. 
So now I've got to do another one over here. And they, you know, they don't need to be exactly the same, but you want them to be similar enough that you can get an idea with the two different colors of paint. And you could be doing this with, you know, maybe what you have is like Crayola and um, Rose Art. That's fine. Do it with those. And you know what? And see if they have light fastness information. If somebody out there, if you have just really basic craft store paints, maybe you have Artist Loft and Crayola or something like that, find out for me if they have light fastness ratings. And if they do, what are they? message me because that would be I think that would be interesting to know kind of looks like it's hanging off a cliff doesn't it but that's fine <laughs> all right so now we're going to just do a couple of little little paintings all right we'll do the schminka first and I'm going to start with the ultramarine blue. Easier to stamp. You could stamp, you could definitely stamp, and you could stamp in, um, per, stamp in permanent ink and then color them in. If you're not a drawer, definitely do some stamping. That's a great solution, and if that's, you know, if you're not, like I said, if you're not a drawer, do some stamping. Use your, even in a limited color palette, you can get some interesting effects. So use your cooler colors in the shadows. And your warmer colors in the light to help you create the effect that you want in your little painting. So here I'm starting with the blue, which is a cool color. And then blending it out a bit with water. I'm going to go in with some of my violet, which is also a cool color. And right into some of the blue. And it's going to blend with some of the blue, and I'm okay with that. It's going to give me interesting shadows. Then I'm going to go in with cadmium yellow. As soon as I figure out which one that was. <laughs> and I'm going to go into the areas where the that would be lighter and brighter, that the sunlight's maybe hitting my painting. And then blend them out with water. Now this Schmincke paint, this yellow, and some yellows, not all brands do this, um, are really so well pigmented that you can just put a little bit on there and blend it out with some water and it's going to go far. Some of the Daniel Smith colors do the same thing. Now I'm going to go in with the transparent orange, which is still a warm color, but it's a little cooler than the yellow. And some of these are going to blend with the other colors that are on here, and I'm going to get some brown, or excuse me, wow, coffee burps, or mud. But because I'm not using any neutral colors, I'm okay with that because maybe I want them. They're going to give me something that's interesting. Okay. Let's go in with some red. The idea is to maybe get a little bit of all of your colors in here. So you can really get kind of an idea. But don't just slap them on there and, you know, just put them any old place. Try to be thoughtful about where you put them and create an interesting little sample painting. OK. 
Okay, and the last one we're gonna do is green. Just this one. Now for the green, I wanna just use the green The greens, um, this particular green is kind of cool. It's not real warm green. Now right next to it I have May green, which is a very warm green, and you could use these two greens together and actually get a really interesting painting. That's a whole other conversation. So there you go, that's a little cute little interesting house painting. All right. So that's with the Schminka palette. Does anybody have any questions so far? So now we have the Daniel Smith palette. Coffee break. Okay. If anybody has any questions on either Ustream or Periscope, please don't be afraid to ask. I may not know the answer, but I'll tell you so, and maybe we can find out what the answer is together. All right. I took out a lot of brushes when I set up this morning, and I'm <laughs> just like per usual, I'm just using this small Van Gogh number six round. All right. So now we're going to do the uh, Daniel Smith. Again, we're going to start with the blue. With watercolors in general, the more water you add, the lighter and more transparent your color will be. It's easier to work with them though if the pigments are um, well done, well made, than it is if they're not. We will be, as we do some of these experiments, we will be um, uh, comparing to some of the artist grade paints. Some brands that are, you know, lesser or looked on as lesser, like Koi and um, Van Gogh, Prima which is probably considered a craft grade paint or student grade paint. All right, what color did I do next? Purple. I already, see, I already forgot. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. So I'm going in with the cool colors. Now I am making some things darker as I go, but the places that I want to be light, I'm leaving white paper. You could do this the other way where you start with the warm colors and you go darker. If you're more comfortable with watercolor, then you can do it either way. but. If you're just starting out, you might want to start with cool colors. I'm working on it. You're welcome. I'm working on it. So if you could, April, if you could, um, April asked if I had Holbein, Yarka, or Mission paints. No, I don't, but I'm working on it. If you send me those names, I will request, what I've been doing is requesting samples from companies. And... Um, to my surprise, or maybe not, I should maybe I shouldn't be surprised. They're actually responding favorably to this whole idea of this series, and they're sending me samples of paint. So, um, if you send me those, and what's the worst they can do is say no. If they say no, I'll go to my local fine art supply store and see if they carry them, or I'll order them um, within reason. I'll just order like six tubes of the colors that we're working with. 
but um, if um, you send me those names and remind me, because I can guarantee you as soon as we stop broadcasting, I'm probably going to forget. So message me. And I'm, yeah, and I'll try to get samples. All right, so now we're going to go in with our yellow, which is this one. So far, the companies have been very responsive uh, in a positive manner, most of them, to me doing this series and sending me samples. So let's hope that good luck sticks. Okay, and then orange. And it's a good idea to have this right next to you because if you're like me and like two seconds after you do something you forget, <laughs> you've already created a reference palette of the colors that you want to use in your sample paintings. So <laughs> I would definitely recommend you keep that handy. So put on some pigment and then lay out some water and blend it with some water. You will notice that um, some colors don't lift as easily as others because they have more of a staining property and they right away soak into the paper and you aren't going to be able to do too much lifting. So generally speaking, you probably just want to be careful about where you stick your paint colors. Uh, red. So this particular, this is the Daniel Smith, which is my preferred brand. I like their, I like their paints. And I, I do think they're more vibrant. Um, there are some colors in the Schmincke palette that I love, like the transparent orange. They also have the Naples yellow red, which is fabulous flesh tone color. <coughs> uh, wait. <sighs> allergies they also have cobalt turquoise now the quar which we haven't done yet and I do have also has a cobalt turquoise we haven't gotten there yet but that's a great color um, they also have nice gold and silver thank you <laughs> all right let's see red yeah thank you hey I can use all those blessings <sighs> my allergies and asthma have been acting up I haven't been doing a lifting test, um, but if that's something that you need to know for your for you, I think that that's a great idea to add a lifting test in here to what you're doing. I when I'm doing these little paintings here, I am noticing with both of them, like right there, that's kind of a lot of red. So then I'm taking my rag and I'm just lifting a bit of it off. I know that red's not going to lift completely off from working with the paint. But I think that that's a great idea when you're doing these to do a lifting test. You might also want to, maybe you want to do a little painting and then maybe you want to do in this other square, um, just pick one color, do a lifting test, scratch into the wet paint, pour salt into the wet paint, and add drops of alcohol into the wet paint, and use the same color for both of these to see how they react. That's actually, I just thought of that just now, and that's not a bad idea. We're running out of time, but it's not a bad idea. Okay, now we're going to go in with the green. Uh, cascade green. What test are you looking for when doing a lifting test? So when you're doing a lifting test, you're looking at whether you can lift the pigment off the paper completely or not um, if needed and most of the time with your fine art paints it's probably not going to lift completely with any brand uh, if they are a fine art quality of pigment 
it probably is going to stain, you know, fairly easily. But I would be more concerned of doing these tests with the two brands and finding out what kind of color depth and variation I can get in the paint, creating little paintings with them, how bright they are and compared one to the other, than I would be in doing different fun like playing techniques like, you know, um, like lifting or anything like that. I am finding I want to add some more of the red to this one. Oh, let's see. You're my dog barking. I bet there's gardeners outside somewhere. Sometimes you want to lift. Sometimes you get you get paint in the wrong place. You know, I do that. <laughs> I, do, I do that a lot. You never know. That might be too much scarlet red, but let's find out. So lifting just means that you put too much pigment like that on there and you're like, ah, right? <laughs> so then you try to lift some of it off and can you get all or most of it off? to create the effect you want easily, or does it automatically, as soon as it hits the paper, stain? And you can lift with a rag or you can lift with a wet brush. I'm just trying to see how hard it is to make these paintings more similar to each other. One is more blue than the other, but that's okay. So something like that. They're both nice. There's there's nothing, I, I wouldn't, you know, I like them both. For me, Daniel Smith has a wider range of colors. They're just as bright, in my opinion. They're easier for me to get. They're made in the USA. Uh, their main office is on the West Coast where I am, a couple states up. <laughs> But they're on the west coast where I am, and um, they're easy, a little easier for me to get. But there's nothing wrong with the Schminka. And some places in the world where you're at, Daniel Smith might be impossible to get, but Schminka might be easy to get. They're both really fine grade artist quality paints. Neither one of them are cheap. They're both expensive. I'll put that right out there for you. When they're on sale, if you are interested in trying them, snap them up. <laughs> um, the Daniel Smith do not come in panned palettes like this. You have to put them in the pans from the tubes. So if you are interested in the Daniel Smiths you, and you want a palette like this, you're going to have to get an empty box and empty pans. Yes, I know. We're going up that way in May, and I'm really hoping that I can talk my husband into an extra day on my trip, our trip, so that I can go there. <laughs> I'm hoping, everybody, I'm hoping. I'll let y'all know. All right, so if you're going to get Daniel Smith, they only come in tubes. I started my Daniel Smith collection buying two tubes at a time at my local art supply store. You're going to need a some kind of palette to put them in. If you prefer to work from dried watercolor paints like I do, then you're going to need something to squeeze them into. I prefer metal palettes because when the mixing area gets too goopy, even for me, it, they're easier to clean. Uh, yeah, thanks, April. I'm, I'm hoping. I'm hoping I really have time, and there's extra time. So I think metal palettes are easier to clean. They don't stain the way plastic ones do. Metal or porcelain. Um, you can get empty palette boxes at Dick Blick, Jackson's Art in the UK, which I love, and I did order one from them recently. Um, Amazon has them, and then you're. They usually come without the little pans, the plastic pans in them. So you're gonna have to order those too. 
So the initial setup for your Daniel Smith palette may be a little more because you're going to need to buy something to put the paint in. The Schmincke come in metal box palettes. Okay, April, I don't know what Kramer pigments it are, um, so you're going to have to message me about that too. She's saying Kramer pigments are good for palettes. I don't know what that is. <clears throat> now, Schmincke comes in metal palette boxes like this already. Oh, see? Okay. Message me, because I never heard of it, and my husband's from New York, so I'd be happy to shop in a New York store. <laughs> um... He's from Queens. Uh, anyway, off topic. Hello, squirrel. Um, Schmincke comes in um, palette boxes like this. this. This is their palette box. I bought it this way. This is the 48 pan set. Now you will notice that this has more than 48 in it because the 48 pan set, you can actually get four more pan. You can squeeze four more pans in here. And if you do, they fit in here nice and tight and they don't wiggle around and fall out. <laughs> and I don't like having that extra wiggle room. So all of my 48 pan sets actually have 52 in them. So even the Daniel Smith one has 52 in it. So I've added four more to each one. Now these, these I love these um, metal boxes and you can take these, this insert comes out with all the paints on it. You can actually use all of this as mixing area also and the lid. And they sell, I think, 12, 20, I want to say 12, 24, 36, and then the big one, 48. But I'm not positive. That might be wrong. But look at Dick Blick. They do sell on Dick Blick the empty Schmink palette boxes. Um, but you can get generic metal boxes from a lot of different places. Um, they're fabulous, though. Uh, and they're really great because they close up, you know, small. And you've got lots of mixing palette room and everything all in one box. Now, when you are using your watercolors, of course, and you've done like I've done and they're wet, don't close it up until they're dry. Leave them sit out while, a while while they're dry. So here's our first two brands. Daniel Smith and Schmincke. I like them both. It's personal preference which one you prefer, I think. Daniel Smith has a lot more colors in the in the line, I think, than um, Schmincke does. And um, you all know, if you've been following me for a while, that I love color. And I love a variety of color. And I hate having to mix color because I am not the frugal crafter. That's Lindsay. I'm the lazy crafter. So if I can get away with, with not mixing color, I'm going to do that. <laughs> that doesn't mean I don't know how. It just means I don't like it. So I prefer Daniel Smith because there's a lot more colors to the range. Plus, Daniel Smith has this really great dot color chart that you can get, you know, for 20-some dollars. Yeah, I'm the lazy crafter. And I cut mine down to fit in this little book, but they come on 8.5 by 11 sheets. And you can, for 20-some dollars, you can get a sample of each one of every one of their colors. And I don't think that anybody else does that. Quar uh, Golden has a few samples for their paints, but not like Daniel Smith where you can get, actually get them all. Um, and I love that about them. So it, do you, does anybody have any questions? So get together with your friends if you haven't already. Have everybody bring their different brands of watercolor. I recommend doing this with even with your Crayolas and stuff too. And if you can find information on light fastness and stuff from the, some of those, you know, crafty brands... Um, hey, let me know and let send me the information and, and let's work with those too. I am going to put these back in my binder. My Facebook group is called A Life of Art and Self-Expression. The link should be on my um, website. This is going to be uh, become... A watercolor reference book and as part of these reference this reference yeah GinaBearns.com if you go there the very first page of the website there's a link to my email list and then if you go to the blog page I think is a link to the Facebook group something like that but it's on there 
I know it's on the blog page. Well, Cheryl, talk to some of your local friends and peeps and see if they have watercolors and which brand they have. Maybe you have the Gonzai paints, but maybe they have Koi. Get together and do this test with those brands. And if you aren't up to doing any of these tests and you're just going to watch me do this so that you can make an educated decision about what kind of paint up, you know, are going to work for you to upgrade to in the future, that's cool too. I want to do this uh, for you guys so that you guys can make an educated decision about what paints are going to work for you with your budget. Because that's the number one question I get asked is I want to upgrade my paints from, you know, the craft store paints I have um, and the, you know, or the, you know, Crayola paints that I have to something better. So what should I buy? And I'm not going to give you a specific brand, but I'm going to show you some examples of what I like and what works for me so that you can make a more educated decision about what's going to work for you. And even if you only have one brand, do some of these little paintings. These are good practice. And do, do some of these little paintings, do four of them, and maybe do them in different colorways. Then do another one and do some background techniques. You know, make four squares and paint the same color in all four squares, scratch into the wet paint in one. Pour salt onto the wet paint in the other one. Let it dry. Don't touch it. Leave it alone. Drop alcohol into the wet paint in one of them. That's an interesting technique. On the other one, put white crayon underneath it. Draw a doodle and then paint over the top of it. And you, there's lots of different ways to do this watercolor reference book that don't have anything to do with comparing paint brands. I'm gonna and I'm gonna shoot as many of them out there to you guys as I think of them. Um, for me, this is going to be comparing paint brands because right now that's, um, that's what I have and that's what we need to do. Definitely, if you have, if you, whatever watercolor media you have, water soluble media, maybe you have a watercolor paint, watercolor pencils, and gelatos. They're all water soluble. Maybe you want to do these comparisons with each one of those to see what they look like next to each other and what kind of effects you can get, which ones are more strongly pigmented than the other. Hey, Brandy, which ones are more strongly pig pigmented than the other? And when you do little paintings with them, which ones give you the effect that you want? So maybe you only have one watercolor paint brand, but you have some, but you also have watercolor pencils. You've got gelatos. Do you have water soluble oil pastels? Because that would work. Anything that's water soluble. You could even do this with some of the um, inks. So if you have dilution sprays, they're water soluble. If you have FW acrylic inks, you could do something like this with them. You just have to work a little faster because with the acrylic, once it dries, you can't move it around. Think outside the box a little bit and what water soluble mediums do you have in your art room that you can do some comparisons with to, you know, to compare them one to the other for vibrancy of color, yeah? And then when, do little paintings with them to see which one's going to really give you the effects that you want when you're working with these little paintings. And it's not a bad idea to do some technique tests. And maybe at some point we will do that in here. We'll do some technique pages. Um, I, I think first you should do the comparison to each other do your little paintings. Then once we have that done, pick your one or two favorite brands and we can do some techniques and we can add to our reference book with some techniques. Silks will work, Twinkling H2Os, whatever you have. And maybe as part of this book you want to do an inventory of what you do have. I'm not going to be bothered anymore. I did that once. It was just too much. <laughs> it's not updated. I haven't updated it. Nobody tell Peta Thompson, please, my friend Peta, because she'll be mad at me. <laughs> it's so beyond out of date, it's not even funny. 
All right, that's it for today, everybody. If you want to support the free broadcasts, my YouTube channel, um, the Facebook group, you can shop in my Etsy shop. There is a Top Shop listings on my website. It has all the places you can find all my merch, um, including Etsy, Redbubble. I just added a bunch of new things to Redbubble. There's a support button on my YouTube channel main page, you know, all that stuff. Um, and just don't forget the most important thing. Have fun and play. Do something nice for yourself. You deserve it. Play with your supplies. It's not about creating fine art. It's not about being Picasso. It's about enjoying the journey, having fun, and doing something nice for yourself because you deserve it. I saw that, Brandy. Thank you. And somebody ordered from um, Etsy this morning. Thank you so much. All right, everybody. That's it for today. I have to go have something to eat. <laughs> Maybe go run a couple of errands. I've got to get some steps in. <laughs> and I will talk to you all later. Do your comparisons. I'd love to see what you do. If you create some charts and you want to share, um, send me the pictures, post them to the Facebook group. Um, it would be great. We should create a file with our, our pictures in the Facebook group so we have reference material we can share with everybody because maybe you have gelatos but maybe somebody else doesn't and they don't know whether they want them or not and they can compare them to what they do have. So that would be great. All right, everybody. Have a great day.